Designing intentionally is thinking about who you're designing for and then what they wanna see and then making sure that enough of you comes through as well. Like we're not gonna just completely design for only for somebody else because you don't wanna lose the authenticity of your brand, but we wanna make sure that whoever is interacting with your brand or interacting with your website is gonna like what they see. So balancing those two different things. You're listening to the Copywriter On Call podcast. I'm your host, Sarah Gillis, copywriter, word magic maker, and owner of What Sarah Said. On this podcast, you'll feel empowered to show up online in a way that has you saying, that's so me. Let's get started. All right. Welcome to the Copywriter On Call podcast, friends. I am your host, Sarah Gillis, and I am clocking in for some on-call hours today with my sweet friend and fellow creative, Claire Palmer of Juniper Folk Designs. Claire owns Juniper Folk Designs, a brand and web design studio that specializes in authenticity and intentionality. After working in the service industry for over a decade, she pivoted and instead of serving incredible cocktails, she now serves up powerful brands and websites. She launched a Show It website template shop and offers three website templates named after her favorite cocktails. And she prides herself in design that has strategy and emotion at the forefront. I am so thrilled to welcome Claire to the Copywriter on Call podcast. Hello. Hello, my friend. How are you? I am so good. How are you? I'm so good. Thank you so much for being here. I'm thrilled to chat. So sweet. All right. So I want to give you an opportunity to kind of introduce yourself, share kind of your story about how you came into business and why you're doing what you're doing now, and then how our paths eventually crossed. I own Juniper Folk Designs. I started my business almost three years ago now, tech when I got into design, but I have a degree in professional writing that I have from Michigan State, but most of that was kind of the rhetoric of design and people understanding and how people understand design concepts. So I pivoted from working in the service industry. I put myself through college working in hospitality and then eventually decided to move out of that and launched my business. And it has been a absolutely insane ride, but I wouldn't change it for the world. It's been great. <laughs> I love that. I love that so much. And I think that your career in hospitality probably suited you really well to entrepreneurship because there's so many ups and downs in that and so much excitement. So I would love to hear a little bit about how it compares to the life that you were living before you launched your business. Besides the fact that the schedules are completely different because now instead of working until 2 a.m., I'm working until 6 p.m. or whatever. I mean, sometimes it's still 2 a.m. So besides that, you're right. I mean, the fast pacedness is the same. I'm from Traverse City, which is a super touristy town, which means that we're really busy in the summer, slow in the winter. So moving from that and having your own business, it does kind of prepare you for having seasons, like seasons in your business and understanding that things are going to shift and change and that's okay. And that's just the way of life. So that was a cool preparation, very specific from my town, but then otherwise just getting the opportunity to meet so many awesome people. I mean, both with people that I've met digitally and people that I've met in person clients that I've met. I mean, I'm obsessed with every single person you (laughs) I met through the Instagram and the digital world. I mean, technically your path crossed my path way before you knew who I was, which was when you were on Maddie's podcast. And yep. And I heard you and you did a thing. You did a podcast episode about brand voice. Loved it. I listened to it like two or three times because I loved it. And yeah, signed up for your email list and then followed you on Instagram. And then we just ended up connecting over a mutual client that we had, which was really cool. So I got to design a website, you did the copy and it was, and then it's just developed into more partnership. You wrote beautiful copy guides for my templates mm-hmm. that are incredible. I mean, it's just uh, amazing. So anyway, <laughs> I mean, I could gush all day. I won't. But thank you. That's <laughs> yeah. so sweet of you. I love that initially that conversation between you and I started when you heard me on another podcast because it feels fitting that here we are, <laughs> right? Conversing like on a podcast. Beautiful full circle moment. It just truly yes. shows like literally anything can happen. It's just wild. This is very cool yeah. the way the world works, you know? Absolutely. And yeah. I loved the collaboration we were able to do working through the client and then also just working on the partnership together with your templates, which are so gorgeous. And I think that what 
really brought me the most joy was collaborating with you and seeing how much you put into your work and how much of yourself you really put into it. So it was my honor for sure. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, when I say it's authentic, it's very just like completely derivative of my personality. Like everything. fun. (laughs) Yeah. That's the best part about being a business owner, right? Is that you can put yourself into things. Yeah. You can do anything that you want. My service industry friends know they can see it. They were friends with me forever. So they know that all the stuff that I do based on hospitality is derived from that. And it's just a cool transition to see. And you know what it means to serve a client well, because you've had such experience in that industry and you're bringing that to everything you do here. And that's so apparent in everything you do. So bravo, friend. Oh, thank you. Wow, tears. (laughs) (laughs) All right, I have kind of a fun question for you to kick off our conversation today. So me being a copywriter, you being a web designer, if a copywriter and a web designer met at a bar, what would they order for drinks and what would be the topics of conversation? Well, okay. Oh my God, I love this question. I think oh, cocktails are super, super matched with personalities. And so, okay, web designer, usually web or brand designer, I'd say it's like something that comes like in a coupe or a martini glass. Mm. So something like an espresso martini or what I order if I order a martini is an extra dirty gin martini with three olives served up <laughs> like like that. I am so specific. Specific. So, <laughs> something in a martini glass. I don't know, just something elevated, something like that. And then something for a copywriter. I feel like copywriters are really good at making any situation or anything sound incredible and amazing. So something with champagne or bubbles. So a copywriter. Cocktail that has just because copywriters are so good at literally taking anything and making it sound beautiful and inviting, gorgeous, any way you're trying to make it sound really any brand voice, if you will. Mm. But something with champagne. So either like a spagliato, a champagne cocktail, Mm. something like a French 75, something like that. I mean, even a mimosa, something that has some bubbles in it. (laughs) I love that. It's literally two o'clock central time right now. And I'm like, okay, when is it? Five o'clock somewhere. Let's do that. Somewhere, right? It's got to (laughs) be. What would a copywriter and a web designer talk about together? Oh, gosh. I think it's just, well, first they would have awesome conversation because I feel like web designers come from such a full picture kind of looking at the whole thing and then copywriters come with like very specific anecdotes and stuff if you will i don't know Mm -hmm. they could talk about anything but it would just be a really great it's such a ridiculous thing to say but like a really balanced conversation like a very (laughs) of course it would be like it would just be like intro words that i can't think of intro middle (laughs) body paragraph god it's like ninth grade ninth grade grammar is coming back or ninth grade english class but yeah conclusion all the different things like bullet points in there something nice yeah love it (laughs) i think they'd laugh a lot too and i think they would probably bond over what it means to make sense of what it means to work right so make sense of others work make sense of others passions obviously the brand designer would be working on the visual aspects of it but the visual aspects definitely play a role into the copy as well which leads me beautifully into my next question so how important is copywriting when it comes to building a brand and a website specifically so much i can say this like i'm very biased because i do have experience in this field, but if I'm someone who is just a casual visitor to anything, especially if you're an online service provider where websites really are speaking when you don't have any other way to physically speak, the words and the text that's on the site from a visual aspect play into so much. And then from a strategic aspect to write with keywords and SEO focused is also so important. I mean, they work like hand in hand together. So they yes. really do play a huge role. The copy throughout your entire brand and website's important, but especially when you're landing like on a site. Yeah, I think that's so true. And I love that you said that a website is something that speaks for you when you aren't necessarily right next to somebody. Mm-hmm. Like that is, I call it the modern day business card for that reason, because it is something that like sticks out and presents yourself in moments where you could not even know that there was somebody lurking on your site. So it's important to have that copy stand out and to have the the visual elements of the brand really support it well. It really does. Yeah. I'm doing a client work right now. She called it, she, what she called, she said a sexy PDF. She Ooh, was like, love it. I was like, I am obsessed with that. She was like, I want my website to just be like a sexy PDF. And I was like, girl, 
Oh my God. I love I got this you. And you, I got you. This is incredible. <laughs> I love that. That's so fun. That's so yeah. fun. Yeah. So as somebody who puts the visuals together for different clients across industries, I mean, girl, you work with photographers and fitness folks and all of the folks in between. <laughs> I mean, how do you go about balancing the visual elements with the messaging and the tone that's conveyed through the copy? Where do you, where do you begin kind of creating that marriage? Designing intentionally is thinking about who you're designing for and then what they want to see and then making sure that enough of you comes through as well. Like we're not going to just completely design for only for somebody else because you don't want to lose the authenticity of your brand, but we want to make sure that whoever is interacting with your brand or interacting with your website is going to like what they see. So balancing those two different things, going to the very, very specifics of like color psychology and font mm. psychology, different topography, the history of topography. I could go on. I love all of that yeah. and where it comes from. And there's so many things that our brain recognizes without recognizing so like subconsciously we'll notice something and that's true with copy so then making sure that the copy and the design match you know you don't want to design something that's maybe beautiful and energetic and wonderful and very elegant and feminine and balanced and then you have copy that's like really aggressive really bold really just isn't quite cooperating with them and they're yeah. not quite holding hands not to say it can't be done, but, you know, making sure that everything is balanced, like a well-balanced yeah. cocktail. I can relate I, everything back to it, I swear, but <laughs> yeah. I'm totally fine with that. I'm here. I'm here for that metaphor. It's so good. Yeah. I think that's really interesting, especially when you're thinking about what it means to be a business owner today, because a lot of it is personality based and a lot of it is what we're drawn to ourselves. But we also have to think about our clients on the other side, right? I always liken it to like walking into a pizza place and seeing like Chinese food on the menu. You would be like, where did I get turned around? What's yeah. going on here? Oh my gosh, am I in the Twilight Zone? <laughs> I think that you're absolutely right that the design and the copy have to go hand in hand. They have to match and they have to mesh. So I totally agree and totally appreciate that approach to it. Yeah. So let's get into the part about kind of the showing up online piece that is so important when it comes to business ownership today, whether you're a solopreneur, whether you're a service provider or in a product-based space, the matter of deciding how you want to show up and present yourself. And sometimes that's a decision that is really hard for people. It's a choice to show up confidently as yourself. And so I would love to hear about a time that you worked with a client and you noticed that that client was experiencing some sort of a block that didn't allow them to show up as they are, whether it's in business or in life. Tell me about that. First of all, you have it completely nailed down. Yes, it is very difficult to try to balance that, especially in the digital age and trying to show up on social media. So it's, what I do, especially with business owners who already have something established, it can be sometimes kind of alarming to kind of separate from what they already do and then move into something else. And first of all, you can do anything at any given moment at any given time. I'm not going to say it's easy, but you could literally change. You can do whatever you want. And right. so it's always important to remember that, especially with showing up online. I worked with a business owner who she is a business online management and she had a brand identity and she was like, you know what? I really love this. It is something that I think is really good. She had a couple graphics and like different designs and illustrations that were associated with her brand. And she just, she was like, this is great. I can't argue that it's not great, but it doesn't feel like me. And so because it doesn't feel like me, I feel like I don't want to share it. I don't want to show up and do these things because when you're not attached to what you're doing, then what are you doing? <laughs> you right. Know? You know, so, right. and so we worked together. We really went back to the very beginning. I was like, okay, so why did you start this? Where did you come from? Who are you trying to attract? Who do you work with? And we went back and we found roots in, she was really attached to where she came from. She really felt like the feelings and emotions that were associated with her place could be in her brand. And she wanted that to be a representation of herself. And so it was, yeah, it was really fun. I really, I love her. She's so sweet. So we worked together and we completely pivoted, like wildly so. We went from a super kind of like edgy modern brand vibe to a really like Western chic. That's what we called it. And it was fun. like really comfortable colors, really inviting, muted, like dark green, stark, a nice neutral palette, but like nice green, gold in there, everything. And we really changed into a completely different perspective, but it was rooted in where she came from. 
And she just was like, I literally love, this is so cool. This is exactly what I was looking for. I mean, it was really sweet to hear that from obviously a designer perspective, but even more so for her watching her be able to continue to use that and show up the way that she was meant to be because there's that block that's gone kind of. Yes. When you're trying to push something that isn't working, it can be really difficult. It can make you not like anything that you're doing, even though nothing that you're doing is inherently bad. It's just not quite aligned with where you need to be. So anyway, it yeah. was really cool to watch that, her watch her go through and do that. I designed it, but it's her brand. It's who she is. And she's the one rocking it. And it's so cool to see. And I love it. And I'm just like over here in the corner, like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> That's so fun. I mean, I yeah. can, I can so resonate with that. When I yeah. first started, I grabbed like a template logo from Etsy that somebody personalized for me and called it good. And for so long, for like my first two years in business, I was like, this is pretty and stuff, but it doesn't fit me. And then I went through a rebrand process and I was so excited to share this rebrand with my people because it felt like me and it still feels like me. And I think that's such an important piece of like growing up as a business owner, like yeah. where you start is where you start and that's fine. Maybe you nail it the first time and I'm just the unlucky one who didn't. But when you finally have an a brand identity that represents who you are inside and who you want to be tomorrow and four years from now, that's a really beautiful thing. Yeah. That's a really beautiful thing. Yeah. And sometimes you need to start from where you start, you know, and then yeah. that's good. Yeah. yeah. But I think everyone goes through those changes. Yeah. I often get told as a copywriter that I ask really good questions to try and get at all of those pieces. Is that something that your clients tell you too? I bet yeah, the answer funny. is yes. Oh my gosh, funny that you said that. Yeah, someone told me the other day, they were like, wow, these are very, oh, I was doing a design, I remember. But I was doing a web strategy session for someone and they were like, you know, I never even thought about asking these questions in relation to design, but I'm so yeah. glad that you did. And I'm sure people say the exact same thing to you. All the time. It's wild because I wouldn't know how to write for someone if I didn't ask such fundamental questions like how do you greet people are you like a high person are you like a hey girl what do you say but like people take that for granted right they don't think about those things as being part of who they are and how they interact and I'm mm -hmm. sure that there are parallels in the design world as well oh absolutely yeah if everyone thinks about their own way that they speak there's little isms that they do my fiance calls them clarisms they're like really mm. strange things that i say that i just continue to keep in my vernacular for god knows what reason but yeah clarisms but everyone's got an ism yes yeah. yes my sarah ism if i may adopt Love. the term please please is, take it. <laughs> is holy buckets which apparently people don't say but i say on the regular <laughs> that is so funny Wow. Yeah. I might take that. I say when someone does a good job, I'll say good work, twerk, twerk. I, <laughs> I don't know why. It's like a rhyme thing. I think yep. I got it from one of my college friends who like said something funny. I don't know. But yeah, Love I just, I say it and I said it. And one of my friends who was with her boyfriend who doesn't know me as well was like, just that's a clarism. Just move, move on. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> okay. So let's shift gears away from clients and talk about you personally. So when you were getting ready to launch your business and you knew that you had to start showing up as a brand and web designer, how did you approach showing up as yourself online? And what adjustments did you need to make when you were trying to figure out how to show up as yourself? Oh gosh, getting over the fear of just messing everything up because it's a total, I mean, imposter syndrome, everybody talks mm -hmm. about it. It's like a real thing, but like also nobody wants to like actually admit it. But right. yeah, especially when you're pivoting from a different industry, moving into something you have no idea, you see so many things that you're supposed to be like, you're supposed to be this and you're supposed to be this if you like this. And you're not supposed to be anything. You're only you and you only are supposed to be the best you and that's what you should be. But mm -hmm. I definitely struggled with comparison and seeing other people who are further along and trying to understand like where I was going to fit in. And I mean, my fiance always says this. He got it from someone much more famous. I can't believe I can't think of who it is, but comparison <laughs> is the thief of joy. Mm -hmm. which I think about that all the time. And it's super true. It was hard for me to actually believe that what I was doing was okay and right and like all those things. And I think a new business owner, you go through that and that's super normal. But mm -hmm. just understand that 
it's going to be good. Whatever you do is going to be good. You can do it. I promise. Anyone listening, you can do it. Yes. (laughs) Without a doubt. And it'll be so good and so cool. But just reminding yourself of that and just try everything. Do what you think is right. And if it's not working, change. And so what? If you have to change things, do it. Nobody cares. One of the things that I always think about, I have an email coach and she always says when sending an email, she's like, it's just an email. Like at the end of the day, it's just an email. So even if you send an email and you forget to put a link in, or even if you have a collection of grammar errors that you're like, I promise I know what I'm doing. (laughs) She's like, it's just an email. So just send another one or just move on. And like a lot of business ownership is that, right? Like it's just an Instagram post. It's just a story. It's just a conversation. And a lot of it is getting out of our own ways. But I would love to know like what, what shifted for you? What helped to kind of not maybe put the comparison at bay because it sneaks up on all of us, but to really decide, you know what? I'm just going to be me. Like, what was it that really kind of made that crystallize for you? I think doing a ton of internal work and all of those different things and mindset shifting and really finding what works best for you and whoever you want to be and the person that feels like the most authentic self if you don't feel like her at the moment or him or whomever, what would they do? Uh. (laughs) Do what they would do. Or what would the hottest version of you do at this exact moment? And this is, of course, not saying that you should make yourself into somebody that you're not, but just do the best you can and try to show up. And then also trying, like expanding your group of people that you interact with, especially online. You're surrounded by so many different business owners and so many different people, but it can be also isolating at the same time because you're not actually friends, like physical friends with any of these people. Yeah, but like then IRL. Yeah. In, yeah, thank you. In the wild. <laughs> you're not friends in the wild. So reaching out to people, talking to people. I've made some really good friends. I mean, you, I've made other web designer friends. I've made other brand designer friends and copywriters and coaches and et cetera. And just expanding your group of people so that you know that everything you're doing is normal and it's okay and everybody goes through it. And now like I have a group of web design girls who will like message back and forth like, hey, has this happened to you? Is this something that you've struggled with? What did you do? Or Mm -hmm. I have this, can you give advice? Or this is what I'm going through, what can you do? And having those people because at the end of the day, the more of a support net that you have, the more you're going to feel that you're normal. Everything you're feeling is normal. And I can tell you that until I can't breathe. But yeah. for sometimes it takes having a good support system. So that definitely helped. Yeah. Yeah. What is that internal feeling like when you have arrived and you're like, you know what? I'm me. What does that feel like inside of you? What does it feel like to show up as yourself? Really the confidence to just get on and do any, get on stories and just chat or mm-hmm. you're making, even when I'm designing and I know that what I'm designing is correct and on the right path, there's no block. I'm yeah. not in my own way. Nothing is in my way. And I think you put it really pretty when you really well, when you said we just have to get out of our own way. And when you feel like whatever you're doing, there's not some resistance or something there. And I'm not talking about imposter system resistance. I'm talking about some internal something else where you feel like you're not authentic. When that's not there, then you're golden. Yeah. yeah. I often liken the copywriting process. I want to sound like you on your best day. Mm-hmm. I want to put voice to your offers, your services, your products on your best day when nothing is in the way. And that's really how I feel like I'm showing up most authentically is when nothing's in my way. And I'm just living in that best day life. Yeah, for sure. They call like the zone of genius, you know, whatever, like what that is really truly when you're able to access that and get into that. And it's exactly what you're meant to. It's like, oh, yes. (laughs) Yeah. It's like, oh, man, I'm on fire for sure. It feels like nobody can stop you, not Mm -hmm. even yourself, which is a really beautiful thing. It is. It is. Friend, thank you so much for being here. I so appreciate your time. I'm going to share with all the people where they can find you. Thank you. Yes. (laughs) All right. I am sending a big virtual hug to Claire for sharing her experience with the Copywriter On Call podcast audience. Be sure to check out Juniper Folk Designs at juniperfolkdesigns.com or by clicking the link in the show notes. Perfect for the business owner ready to take their website into their own hands, Juniper Folk Designs show it modern and strategic website templates are intentionally laid out to stop the scroll and make you money. 
Gone are the days when you sit at your computer frustrated about not having a website for your clients. Instead, say hello to a beautiful website template that takes less than 72 hours to go from purchase to launch. I was honored to write copy banks for these personality pack templates, and I am so thrilled to offer listeners of this podcast a discount code to shop. Visit juniperfolkdesigns.com backslash template hyphen shop and use the code what Sarah said 10 to apply 10% off your purchase. Until next time, this is your copywriter on call signing off. Thanks for listening to the Copywriter On Call podcast. If this episode has you feeling all sorts of inspired to show up as yourself online, click that subscribe button so you don't miss my stories or practical advice to help you express your quirky, vulnerable, and authentic self online. Chat soon.